The following is a Just Green production brought to you by the Might Be News Network. What's up, everybody? It's the week of December 7th, 2020. This is Might Be Sports. My name is Taylor Cooper. With me, as always, Kevin Reavy. What's going on, Reavy? <laughs> so, uh, it is. What's going on? It is a. Uh, Jam-packed week of sports. The um, Eagles made a, well, I don't know if it's a stunning announcement uh, today that uh, Jalen Hurts is going to be the quarterback uh, for the Eagles this coming weekend against the Saints. Um, what do you think about that, Reevee? What do you First, let me ask you, um, were you impressed at all with Jalen uh, last week? He didn't play much, right? He only played. Uh, he played enough. Yeah, he played. I mean, he, he looked. He didn't look bad out there at all. That that touchdown pass he had was nice. It looked real nice to me. Yeah, he had a couple bombs. Um, all in all, I think if you look at the stat sheet, it doesn't really tell the tale. He gave up a late pick, which wasn't really his fault. Uh, the pocket collapsed on him. Uh, he was hit right as he threw the pass, and it was a pretty good. Um, it was just a good defensive play. I mean, I think that that'll happen when you have a collapsing offensive line. That'll happen nine times out of ten, no matter who's behind center. It's just a fluky thing. But um, yeah, I mean, all in all, I think he played really well. Um, I may be on the more optimistic side than most people. I'm really excited about this because I saw flashes of Russell Wilson with how Jalen Hurts played. It just seemed, especially on that touchdown pass, the ball jumps out of his hand yeah. in a way that really reminds me of Russell Wilson because you see this like compact, not really short, not really tiny. Because, I mean, Russell Wilson, he's not small like I think, you know, Baker Mayfield. And um, uh, his name's escaping me for the Cardinals. But um, he's not tiny like that. I think those guys are kind of tiny. Um, Russell Wilson, I think he's at least six feet tall, six one, maybe even six two. Yeah. Um, I think Jalen Hurts is right around there, six one or so. Um, but they just look compact, and you don't expect the ball to like really jump out of their their, their hand the way it, it does, and how it. Um, they actually have, they both have extremely strong arms, but it just they make it look effortless. And I saw a lot of touch from Jalen Hurts, and. You know, I've said before, I'm an Eagles apologist, and I tend to back the players um, more often than not. And I look for the optimistic stuff, but I was totally ready to – I was expecting Jalen Hurst to not really be able to throw the ball all that well. Yeah. Um, I don't uh, follow college football a ton, yeah. so I don't um, – and it's been a little while. I don't, I don't remember him playing – too, too, too much. I mean, he didn't really have the starter's job um, out there um, in college for a, a while. So um, I don't remember when he was exactly on top of his game rolling. I just I didn't watch that many games. So but, in, uh, in college, it's weird, and and somebody out there would probably disagree with what I'm about to say. I'm not the biggest college guy either, but I've watched enough, and I've seen uh, quite a few games for Jalen Hurts. Um, when he was playing for Alabama, um, and you know, coming from the SEC, <clears throat> that's big defense, big running attack. That's what the SEC is kind of known for: is that 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 physical that physical football, not necessarily like a finesse pass or like the like Alabama has right now. Um, I forget the kid's name, but he's really fucking good. Um, <clears throat> but 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 Jalen Hurts. He was really good at what they had him doing, which was some passing, a lot of running, um, but not necessarily like like a running quarterback. Like he was a dual threat. He just got away with a lot of the running in, in college. I was I was really happy. Well, I was a lot happier, I feel like, than most people were to see the Eagles draft him. I I, I I wonder though, do you think that it? How do I ask this question? 
So there's reports saying that, that Carson Wentz was really upset that they drafted Jalen Hurts in the second round. And I don't necessarily blame Carson for being upset about it. They just gave him this monster deal. Da, 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 da. I don't think that it should affect the way that Carson played this season, and perhaps it has. If it has affected him to the negative effect of, of him playing the way that he has this season, I don't know. I mean, it's like – it sucks that they took him because I wish that Carson Wentz would have played better this year. But I'm glad that they took him because hopefully this is the spark that they need, which is basically a direct quote from Doug Peterson. He said, quote, we're not happy. Or we're not where we want to be as an offense. I looked at this whole thing and decided that for this week it, it, it looked for that spark. We needed to look for that spark again to try and get this team over the hump and to try and get everybody playing better. So... <clears throat> I am on the Hurts wagon, if you will. I, I want Jalen Hurts to do good. I want to see him, you know, grow. I don't know what that means for Carson Wentz. I would much rather prefer Jalen Hurts than uh, uh, Dak, Dak Prescott. <laughs> I, it took me a whole week to digest your shenanigans from last episode. While I believe that it is a logical thought, it still was just astonishing to hear that coming from you. Which, if you missed last week, listeners, uh, Kevin Reevy uh, laid out a well thought out and well constructed plan to for the uh, for the Eagles to salvage not this season, obviously, but things moving forward with maybe a Dak Prescott behind the helm. Well, that's what I'm thinking is, you know, is Dak, what kind of contract is Dak Prescott going to want now that he's lost a year to injury? Is it going to be what he wanted before in the $35 million a year, 40 million, whatever he wanted per year? Is he, are those still the demands? If so, I think the Cowboys are going to walk. I don't know if he gets a big discount now to the Cowboys. I don't know if that's a possibility. I don't know if he, if they're going to come together. I feel like now more than ever, there's there's not going to be a uh, a franchise tag situation. I think that would be wild to do that for a guy coming off a season-ending injury. So he's going to be a flat-out free agent, you would think. And I think you look at a situation where you look at a, around the league, what teams are going to need quarterbacks. And now the Eagles seem to be in that, kind of situation now if you're another team it's it's kind of like donovan mcnab when the eagles had to move on from donovan mcnab and they had kevin cobb and they had mike vick they didn't quite know what they had yet in vick but they were willing to roll the dice on Cobb. Yeah. now everyone in the, the league still thought donovan mcnab had plenty left in the tank i mean maybe the eagles knew something that you know nobody else knew but andy reed was actually asked at the time you know this is an interesting move. You know, you, you got this guy brought you to a Super Bowl and you're moving on to Kevin Cobb completely unknown. And he said something along, along the lines of you got to take one step back to get one mile ahead long run. So I kind of get that I idea with moving on from Carson Wentz. But if you look around the league, Carson Wentz is going to be a very attractive option. Now, if you have the option, if you're the Indianapolis Colts or you're the New England Patriots or the Chicago Bears and you need a quarterback, which would be more attractive to you, taking on Wentz's deal now via trade or having to sign a guy coming off of injury as a free agent who might potentially want a ton of money, potentially more than what Wentz is making per year right now? Yeah, I would say – the more attractive contract would be Wentz, especially because you're not on the hook for the signing bonus money and you're further along in the contract where you can cancel it in year three and four, whereas you're starting completely fresh with Dak Prescott. But the Eagles just want to move on. So I don't think Wentz is necessarily, necessarily going to factor into those plans. Now, if the Eagles are comfortable with Jalen Hurts and Hurts plays well the rest of the, the year – I don't think that's going to factor in. But if you have a situation where it's – and, again, this is assuming Wentz is going to be off the board. 
because at this point he's benched, and I think there's just too much of a trade market to, to hold on to him at this point. So if he's off the off the board, I'm looking around at free agents, and there's that big name. There's Dak Prescott. So Jalen Hurts or Dak Prescott, and we're going to find out. We'll see how Hurts plays. But again, you look at um, uh, Jalen Hurts' numbers, they don't jump off the page. You know, he had like a 67 QB rating, but if you, if you watch the game, he, he ran the ball, uh, I think, five times for 30 yards to good average. Um, he only completed like five of 12 passes. Yeah, five but, of 12 for 109 yards, one, right. one touchdown, one pick, and three sacks. So that's over 20 yards per pe- per complete pass. So that's what I'm looking at there. You see five of 12, and normally you're going to be looking at like, you know, 48 yards. 109 yards off five passes is pretty, pretty impressive. Pretty good, And yeah. if you look at the highlights, like some of those passes, my God, like they were – I didn't expect them to be that on target. And this, this is to nobodies, nobody receivers with a Swiss cheese offensive line and all of the same problems that Carson Wentz has had all season. So, and he's been able – He's more able to make this offensive line work because Hurts is just a little bit more more mobile. Whereas Wentz right now, Wentz I think is still pretty mobile, but Wentz is like finding all the wrong holes. Right. And he's kind of up in his head about it. He'll you'll see an opening where he can go right and he'll start there and get like squeamish. I don't know if that's the right word, but he'll and then he'll just move back right into a defender. Like he'll just he doesn't quite know what to do. He's not comfortable at all in the pocket or out of the pocket. And Hurts, you know, it's just fresh blood. And at this point, I think you know, everybody's talking about a QB controversy. I think it's already over. I mean, unless Hurts plays so poorly, I think the Eagles are just going to move on. I don't see – I mean, I guess the, the upside is there might be nothing to gain long term. If the Eagles decide that – this roster is just screwed. They made too many bad draft choices that it's just is what it is. Maybe they just ride with Wentz one more year because right. it's just, it's impossible to kind of fix that kind of problem in one season. So if that's how big the problem is as they perceive it, then maybe they just say, screw it. We'll just stick with what we got. But the way things look, I don't see Wentz being the starting quarterback for the Eagles next year. Wow. Yeah, I mean, this definitely gives off the vibe of moving on, you know, like, and I don't know what that is going to equate to at the end of the season, whether that is moving on from Carson Wentz. I do believe that they're moving on from him for the season, again, provided that Jalen Hurts doesn't come out and shit the bed, but I don't think that that's going to happen, and and quite frankly, I don't know if it matters at this point. And what I'm curious though is that if at the end of the season, if they're if they're going to be more willing to move on from Doug or more willing to move on from Carson, and that's the I, thing. That, yeah, I think that, that, I th- that's the thing that really is is kind of yeah. interesting to me as far as an unknown. I think Doug absolutely stays put, um, and then. You know, Howie, the GM, maybe he uh, – I can't see him being fired. I could see him maybe – them creating a situation where he steps down on his own or he moves to a different position with the team, the president, whatever it is. Um, but, yeah, I, it's just – it's really difficult to move on when you, you won a Super Bowl three years ago. Yeah. So, I mean, but I don't know. Um I guess my thing is, that, you know, one factor I didn't really talk about, which does factor in, you, you look at Carson Wentz's track record. Year one, 31 touchdowns, seven picks. Year two, 21 touchdowns, seven picks. Year three, 27 touchdowns, seven picks. Coming into this year, I think he had a QB rating over 100. Um, you're talking about, I mean, that, that first season, he was in the talks for MVP. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't that long ago. This is a fun stat that I sometimes throw out there. You know the first player in NFL history to throw over 30 touchdowns and less than 10 picks in the same season? The first NFL player to do that. Carson Wentz was? No, it was – of course not Carson Wentz. No, it was uh, Donovan McNabb. 
Oh, no shit. He was the first guy. So 2004, he was the first one to do it. And then the game became a big time passing game right, right after that. I think the very next season, three guys did it. I believe it was Brady, Peyton Manning, Drew Brees. And it's been done a bunch of times since, but that's still a big thing. You know, before 2004, nobody, nobody had ever done it. And Carson Wentz, his first, you know, full season in the league, uh, throws 31 touchdowns, seven picks. So, um, that track record is totally there. And I wonder, that was kind of a tangent, but what I'm getting at is the further you get, get away from that, those three years where he played really well, albeit got hurt a little bit, how difficult will it be to trade him? And he's getting older. He came into the league at like 24. He's older than most guys did coming into the league, 23, 24, whatever it was. So, you know, the clock is kind of ticking on on that. Yeah. Maybe you trade him in the offseason now because he, his value may never be higher. It's going to be difficult. Um, I think the talk about his contract is more so you just can't cut him. But I think there's a lot of – I think his contract is actually attractive to a team taking him on because it's not a ton of money, and you do have options moving forward. And – there's always the option you trade him to, to a team and you kind of renegotiate a deal like uh, Nick Foles did with the cat with the uh, bears. You know, he signed a people for, forget Foles signed like an $88 million deal with the Jaguars. I think for like four years when he was traded to the bears, that was a totally restructured deal. So the same kind of deal could work with Wentz going to an, another team. So right now I think I've thought of the bears. I think the crazy deal like it seems insane, and it's just one of those things that's too perfect and maybe not going to happen. But trade him to the Bears for a second round pick in Nick Foles, Ugh. and then you roll with Jalen Hurts, and then Nick Foles backs him up, and everybody's going to. I mean, I don't think you could say, "Oh, there's going to be a QB controversy, and that's going to be hanging over J- Jalen Hurts." First of all, I'm sick of that kind of talk. Light a fire under Jalen Hurts. These are professional athletes. It's so funny how we like yeah, yeah. coddle these guys and oh. I mean, really, Jalen Hurts is going to be upset about a 35, 36-year-old quarterback behind him that just can't seem to hang on to a job in Chicago, of all places. So I think that could be a great idea. It never really works, but it's one of those signings where they say it puts butts in seats. Yeah. The fans would love to see Foles come back. Oh, my God. And then you just frame it as, hey, it's going to be a real QB – uh, what do you call that competition right. in uh, camp next year? Foles against Hertz. Hertz will win out and Foles will gladly back up. That'll be the deal. Yep. So we'll see. Um, I said it first. <laughs> uh, so, all right, let's, uh, let's talk about some um, NFL playoff picture, which doesn't, won't include the Eagles. Uh, if the playoff started today, Pittsburgh would have a first round bye, and the Saints would have a first round bye. Uh, the Colts would be playing the Chiefs. Dolphins playing the Buffalo Bills. Cleveland playing the Tennessee Titans. Minnesota would be playing Green Bay. Tampa Bay would be playing the Rams. Seattle would be playing the Giants. Um, so, still in the hunt, though, would be the Raiders. The Ravens, the Patriots, uh, let's see, Arizona, Chicago, Detroit. Wow, there's one, two, two, three, four teams in the NFC that are tied at five and seven. Chicago, Detroit, San Francisco, and Washington. Well, and the Giants as well, but the Giants, I guess, just have the tiebreaker over over Washington. I didn't watch the uh, the the Washington versus the Steelers game, but um, I obviously saw the the uh, shocking final score. I didn't really see that coming. Yeah, I didn't see it coming either. A lot I of thought for sure the Steelers would would pull that out. Do, I knew do you knew that think, they were just hanging on by a thread? Do you think but, the Steelers are are eleven and one good? Like, do you think that no, they're like the all. real deal? You don't? Okay, not at all. But I. They just they've been hanging around for a long time. Yeah. They haven't beaten anyone decisively in a while, if I recall. And um 
Yeah, I think, I mean, shoot, even uh, the Eagles game, we didn't quite know how bad the Eagles were yet. And the Eagles made that kind of close. They came back in that game. I believe it was a one-score game when it was all said and done. Actually, yeah, they had a chance to either tie or go ahead with a field goal late. And uh, I believe that was the 50-something yard kick, whatever it was, 60-yard kick. I don't remember. But, um, yeah, they've been hanging on by a thread for a while. They're not really 11-1 and good. But they're kind of banged up a little bit. I could see them getting getting it together. There's not really – I mean, aside from, I guess, the Chiefs. I, I love the Chiefs right now. The Saints, you got to wonder. They're doing this with Taysom Hill, backup quarterback. There's no real dominant teams necessarily to go through, um, again, besides the Chiefs. Kind of like the Steelers. Um, on the NFC side, it's hard to tell who the hell's who. Are the Seahawks – that great. I mean, I w- I've been saying, you know, the best quarterback in the NFC is Russell Wilson. And, you know, they go and lose to the Giants. That's wild. Um, uh, it's, I still think it seems crazy, but you look at the talent level on the Cowboys, maybe there's still a chance for them. They play tonight. As you hear this, that game was over. I assume, you know, again, the, the Ravens are kind of. Yeah, uh, they're a, a falling apart now too. Yeah. It seems like like every team in the, the league has is just like a mess. Besides the Chiefs, you watch the Chiefs play, and it's just like it's unreal. Their offense just clicks, just works. They have you know one of the best quarterbacks in the history of the game. It looks like so they're fine. Every other team, I'm not sure. I still kind of think the Patriots have some life now. Yeah, I, it's, situation's a total mess. Yeah, it's really crazy too because like, I was I was really hoping that the Patriots would just keep keep the gas on for a little while now that Brady's gone, just so I could, you know, bask in being right that Belichick is the reason that they won everything and da 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 da. It really doesn't look that way. It really doesn't look that way. And well, I mean, well, the Patriots I'm are kind of. They're, I'm shocked to be honest with you. Where are they at now? Do you have the uh, playoff picture? What's their record now? The Patriots. Seven and five. They're six and six. They're five hundred. Oh, they're only six and six. Yeah. All right, so that might be difficult for them. But I don't know. You know. You know what's funny? I've been struggling to figure out a way to describe how Cam Newton throws a football, at least for the past few years, and it's different than the way he did early in his career. I think, and I always struggle to figure out how like what it was. And then someone on Twitter, I don't remember who it was, had the perfect explanation. It was great. And he said, Cam Newton throws the football like it weighs 20 pounds. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah that's it. That. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. He winds up. He <laughs> throws his head back. And he just, and you think he's going to bomb it like 50 yards. And then he throws it at somebody's <laughs> feet 10 yards ahead in the middle of the field. And I, it's a unique way to play. I don't think that kind of uh, mechanics works long term, but well, to be fair, to my point that Belichick is better than Brady, uh, the 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 Tampa Bay Buccaneers only are only one game behind the Patriots right now. They're, they're, right. they're seven and five, yeah. and, Every and team also that was playing great early is just not playing great anymore. Also, usually the Buffalo Bills start off good and then they fall off. They haven't. They're nine and or er, uh, nine and three right now. Uh, Miami's even playing really good this year. They're eight and four. So the teams that usually get rolled over by the Patriots aren't getting rolled over this year, and and in turn, they're rolling yeah. over the Patriots. So it's just kind of this weird thing. And if I go on a quick thing. tangent there, that reminds me. So then they went to Tua, and kind of redefined their team. I wrote a story last year. Um, it, all about, you know, running quarterbacks. It was about Colin Kaepernick and how I thought he could be a really good backup quarterback in the league right now because I personally believe, and I think the stats back it up, that if you have a backup quarterback that primarily runs or at least has that in his arsenal, is a big-time runner, that's the best kind of backup you can bring into the game because there's it's so complicated getting, like, the routes right, getting the timing with the wide receivers – if you could throw a guy in there that can just, you know, Michael Vick it a l- little bit and run around and screw with 
the uh, defensive game plan. You know, you you go into a game planning for Carson Wentz and you end it with Jalen Hurts. You can't plan for both guys. So I think Hurts went, went in there and kind of sliced and diced the defense for a, a while and did really well. I think that's a great – I think every team should have a running quarter, quarterback as their backup option if they have, you know, a standard quarterback like a Brady, a Breeze, whatever it is. Look at every scenario. The, the Dolphins are playing great right now. They went from Fitzpatrick to Tua. The, the Saints went from Breeze to Hill. Um Sometimes it doesn't work out. I've been saying for years that uh, Lamar Jackson, he was getting by on that effect. He was the most extreme example of his running quarterback. The teams didn't have enough film, didn't have enough time to plan for. But then that went on, on for years, and I was starting to question my own damn theory. But now we're on, like, what, year three or four, and teams are starting to figure him out. And I think is, part of that is there's more running quarterbacks all over the league. Teams are used to it. I saw but something. When you have that shift in, in the short term. It yeah. totally works. I saw something today that uh, Lamar Jackson's QBR has dropped more than like 20 points this year so far. Yeah. Uh, more than Carson Wentz's, which is crazy to me. But um, so Tua, fun fact, Tua was uh, Jalen Hurts' replacement in the right. national championship. Uh, against uh, what Clemson, I guess it was. I don't fucking remember. But um, so yeah, I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see, and it, it's gonna be kind of cool to see both of those guys hopefully succeed as well. Uh, let's do go to the week. Fight me Sports presents the greatest. Of the week. My go to the week. Clear cut go to the week. This week is uh, because I'm kind of a sensationalized person. I'm going to reach ahead. And I'm going to predict that Jalen Hurts is going to fucking deliver this weekend against the New Orleans Saints. And I feel that he's going to at least throw three touchdowns. And he might run for another one. Jalen Hurts is my advanced go to the week. I like it. Yeah. No, I think he's got a chance to do that. I think he, he had. Listen, I was really impressed with him last week, so I could just give him the go to the week on that. But I, if I was really going to be real about it, I'd probably give it to the dude from Buffalo. But for real, for real, I do have faith in Jalen Hurts. I'm a Jalen Hurts guy. I I really hope that um, you know it's. Uh, <laughs> I wish he wasn't his first game starting wasn't going to be against the the Saints, but I, it is what it is. They have a they have a decent defense. They have a good team. I think that this is going to be a great test for Jalen Hurts. I believe that um, he's got what it takes to succeed in the NFL. And if somebody is going to replace Carson Wentz, I would like it to be him even uh for a short period of time until i can figure something better out but jalen hurts that's my guy right now i I like it and you know what it's funny you said a guy from buffalo that's my guy um (laughs) so yeah um josh allen yeah man again you know referencing the article i wrote last year my conclusion basically was you know there's running quarterbacks there's mobile quarterbacks and i draw a distinction between the two the running quarterbacks, I don't think work. I think they get hurt. Eventually, you have to be able to throw the ball. I think that's where Lamar Jackson doesn't work out long term. The two best mobile quarterbacks in the league right now are Patrick Mahomes and Russell Wilson. The thing is with these guys, you know, Patrick Mahomes, Super Bowl MVP, MVP of the league the season prior, he had one rushing touchdown last year. Just one. It's, it's not his game, but he's extremely mobile. Same thing for Russell Wilson. The third best mobile quarterback in the league is Josh Allen. Yeah. And, you know, last week, people have kind of slept on the on the Bills, and he reminded everybody, you know, what he is, completing 80% of his passes. Um, let's see here, 375 yeah. yards. 375. And four touchdowns, zero picks. Um, yeah, I guess the past two weeks prior to that, he had thrown uh, – three touchdowns, three picks. So kind of, you know, falling back a little bit, but it's a good reminder. Josh Allen, one of the best mobile quarterbacks in the league, becoming one of the best quarterbacks in the league. He's tough, period. man. He's tough. I didn't see it coming. Yeah. Uh, it's just 
it's wild that I think he was the third quarterback taken in that draft behind a, a Sam Darnold, maybe Baker Mayfield. I might have these wrong, but I believe he was taken after Sam Darnold. But They're, the Buffalo Bills are on their way to winning their division for the first time since 1995. So I'm I'm rooting for him. I'm rooting for Josh Allen. I'm rooting for the Buffalo Bills. I got family up there that root for them. Uh, That's what 2020 you know, means is to see the Bills win a Super Bowl. Can you believe I think that? That would be awesome. I'm all Who about it. Root for it. The colors they got red, white, and blue going Jim, on. Jim the, Kelly gets a Buffalo. ring. Jim Kelly gets a ring, dude. Buffalo Wings, Buffalo Wild Wings w- would run with that, dude. They would sign Josh Allen. I'm all about it, dude. To a lifetime contract. I'm all about it. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fucking Bills fan now, dude. I'm Buffalo a- Wild Wings sucks, by the way. I don't want to give them free press. Nobody's ever had a good experience at Buffalo Wild Wings. Uh, yeah, I'm not a fan. I'll be honest with you, I'm not a fan. I like, I'm not even a fan of their chicken. It's just kind of like, eh. It's like, it's fa- weird, it's like it's, fast food it's, wings. It's, I, I'm not, a, I'm not, a, I'm not. I don't get into it. It's weird. I like bad food, but I mean that stuff is. It's just I, I don't get it. I don't understand. There's TVs all over the place. It's like, yeah, well, that's what everybody's doing now. I guess it was a novelty like ten years ago when nobody was really doing that, but. Now your mom and pop pizza. I mean, TVs cost like twelve bucks. Like anybody <laughs> it's not can not impressive, this. right? It's not impressive. Mama Mia's pizza down the street has like three sixty-inch TVs <laughs> on the wall. So you know they don't have the edge in that game anymore. No, they don't. <laughs> well, Revy, good job this week, man. Thank you so oh, much. By, by the way, I don't know yeah. if uh, the the video is going to go out, so I'll just uh, describe my new hat. Oh, what is it? Do you see the reference? Yeah, yeah. What it, it's a tiger goat. The Tiger King? Nope. What? Tiger Woods. Oh, the goat. So I the, got you. I got the goat you. with tiger stripes. Now tiger that I know what it is, I like it a lot. Before, I didn't know what it was. I still liked it a lot because it still looks dope. But I like that it's not obvious. You're right. It's a conversation starter. Like, people might not know by seeing me, but I'm, I'm a very, very sexy man. I agree. I'm a man of exquisite passion. I agree. And I have a very, very, very long big toe. <laughs> yeah. Revy, good job this week, man. We're sponsored, my by, pleasure. we're sponsored by Unomia CBD. Go to unomiacbd.com, use promo code MBN, get 20% off free shit and free shipping. Go to mbnnetwork.com. No promo code there. Listen to everything. It's never been easier. Peace out, guys. We'll see you next week. See you, Revy.